We're back out checking traps. We're in this huge cattail flat. So they just came up. We're coming up to our first trap here. And we got a kit. So I'm going to take him out of here. We'll remake this set the same as we did before and we'll go check these other two quick. So we checked uh, the other two traps. This trap wasn't fired, but it looks like the beaver came around, skirted me and buggered up my caster mound. So I'm only going to leave these in here probably, I would say maybe one more day, two at the absolute most, and then I'm going to pull them. This might end up being a winter job. So this was just the basic caster mound set uh, on a drowned rod. I can see that my trap is missing. So check it here. And we've got a beaver. See, it's a perfect front foot catch. That last set you guys seen was a caster mount set. This one will be the exact same. That one I used a drowning rod. This one I used a cable with weights. size beaver here. As you can see that's a solid front foot catch. That's exactly how you want to try and catch them. It keeps their head lowest in the water. You always want to make sure you have water deep enough uh, that it'll drown the beaver. So we got that beaver out of the trap. I threw my weights back out. You want to try and keep your cable tight. So this is the MB750. You can see the dog right here. If my cable's on this side of the caster mount, I always like to run my dog towards the cable. It's just something I like doing, I guess. Uh, when I set these traps for the drowners, I set them this way. I never ever set them this way. I don't want it to pop up and throw a beaver out of the trap. That's why I set them this way. I have a better catch ratio. And some of you guys are probably wondering why you're using such a big trap um, for catching beaver on the front foot. So you don't always get them in the front foot, that's ideal. But when you look at a beaver's back foot, from his foot to his ankle, you could say, it's as big as my hand. And when he gets his back foot in here, it fills that trap right up. If you don't catch him above the ankle, he has the potential of pulling out. So that's why we use such a, a big trap. So basically, I make my caster mound. A caster mound is for beavers just kind of marking their scent, their territory. So I'll, I'll make a mock caster mound. I'll put caster on here. And then you just make your bed in the bottom. I bed my trap down in there solid so it's about four inches under the water and I want it back from the bank a little bit so you think of what would be straight where the beavers coming in and you offset to one side just a little bit because obviously his legs are on the side so when he comes in he'll come to about here he'll drop his front feet to try to climb onto the bank and he's gonna step right in your pan so then So this is just caster lure. I get this from Dam Beaver Trapping Supply. So when it's just a gland that, uh, caster gland that the beaver have. So once I put that on there, he's gonna smell that. 
and think that there's a different beaver, a new beaver in his territory. So he's basically to come here, destroy this castor mound, make his own, and remark, remark it with his caster, saying it's his territory. So we'll haul these two beaver back to the truck and we'll go check the, the traps on the other side. So we're just on the other side of the, the dugout here. I just checked that one. Uh, the beaver destroyed the castor mound, but I never caught him. He came up from the backside. They sometimes will do that. You can see I had a little caster mound here. You can see his footprints and stuff in here. And my trap was bedded right in here. So this will be a kit. So here is a smaller beaver. I don't know if you guys can see that back foot catch. So this is a, a kit from this spring. And you can see I got him around the ankle, but a big beaver, this is his pad, would actually be flat on here. That's how big their back feet are. And that's why I set up uh, caster mounds in here before I set the house up. Because say there was only one entrance and I would have caught one in a cotter bear. Well, I wouldn't have caught these other two beaver. This way, hopefully, I never educated some of the ones in the house, and maybe tonight we'll catch a few more. So we'll get them out of here, and we'll come back tomorrow and see if we haven't uh, caught a few more. So these are the three beaver from today's catch. I'm thinking these two are probably three-year-olds. Like I said, this one's a little kit from this year. So I'm not sure if this is going to be the breeding pair or, or not. Um, these beaver aren't huge by any stretch. Uh, this one's, I'm going to guess, right around that 50, 50 pounds. This one's probably about that 45, a little bit lighter. So, yeah, that is five traps, three beaver overnight, which isn't too bad. So we'll hopefully we'll, we'll be able to catch a few here the next couple days. So we're just getting out here. We're doing our second check on this dugout. I had checked all three caster mounds on that side and the other two on this side none of the traps are fired none of the casters uh, caster mounds are disturbed in any way we we must have caught the breeding pair out of here but we only did catch that one kit uh, i'm assuming that there's got to be more beaver in here than just that that one kit so i'll probably leave it here i'll let them soak for a couple more days we'll come check tomorrow and then if there's nothing we might even pull tomorrow but i'll give it tonight and, and we'll do a check tomorrow for sure. Maybe leave it one more day.